and they express why they are successful. This is a topic that I'm excited to talk about because I would estimate that I've been to Panda Express more than any other fast food restaurant, and I'm guessing that most of the people watching this have been there as well. I say that because they are the largest chain of Chinese restaurants or any Asian food in the United States. That is a big title. They have over 2,000 locations that are mostly in the United States, but in 2011 they opened a restaurant in Mexico and have since been making their way all across the world. For example, you can now find them in Canada and South Korea, Japan, Russia, the Philippines, and all totals to over $3 billion in sales a year, making them one of the most successful restaurants in the world. So I thought it would be interesting to take a closer look at Panda Express and try to zero in on the biggest reasons behind that success while talking about how they grew into what they are today. My first reason behind their success is the fact that this company owns other chains of restaurants that have proved to be helpful on multiple levels. See, the company that I'm talking about out here is Panda Restaurant Group, and even though Panda Express is by far the largest brand that they own, they are not the only one, nor were they the first. The main people behind all of it are the husband and wife team Andrew and Peggy Chern. Today they are, in fact, billionaires, so it's a great story of immigrants succeeding in the US. Andrew was raised mostly in Taiwan, while Peggy came from Hong Kong. They met each other in the 1960s when they were students studying mathematics at Baker University in Kansas. After graduating, Peggy continued her education, earning her PhD in electrical engineering, and going to work in the aerospace field for various companies, and even did some coding for the US Navy. But Andrew surprisingly went on to manage a restaurant that was owned by his cousin. Honestly, it doesn't sound like the best job. He says that he would typically work seven days a week and get paid $800 a month for it. Plus, it sounds like he had a lot of disagreements as far as how it should be operated. So, in 1973, he left his position there and set out to open his own restaurant. He raised $60,000, partially from a loan from the Small Business Administration, but most of it came from his friends and family. His father was, in fact, a chef, so he was a valuable partner, and teaming up with Ann Rue to open the Panda Inn in Pasadena, California. Unlike the Panda Express that we know today, it was more of a traditional Chinese dining type environment. The costs were fairly low because most of their labor force consisted of family members working for free. But the sales were there because there was a diverse community in the area that was receptive to the foreign cuisine. So, for the next nine years, they existed as that single successful restaurant. Then all of that changed in the early 1980s. In that short time, Andrew's father died. Peggy left her career to help run the business and they opened the second Panda Inn in Glendale, California. And when it came to naming it, they called it Panda Express to convey that it was a faster version of their existing Panda Inn. By the way, the Panda Inn chain still exists today as five locations in California, and clearly, without the foundation that it provided, Panda Express would have never existed. A couple of other restaurant chains that they own that have potentially helped them in different ways would be Hibachi-san. That's a Japanese restaurant that they started in a mall in Minnesota in 1992, and Raising Canes, they didn't start that one, but as of 2018, they do earn money from the ones that they franchise in Hawaii and Alaska. All right, that was the longest one. My next reason behind their success would be flexibility, and for this, I'm mostly referring to their ability to adapt their concept into different sizes and different environments. After five years, they had about a dozen locations that I believe were all in shopping malls, but then they started opening bigger standalone alone restaurants, as well as some others that were inside of other types of buildings. It started when they opened one inside of a Vaughn supermarket in 1988, but today you can commonly find them just about anywhere. I'm talking about airports, military bases, sports stadiums. Next up on the list is a lack of competition, not to take anything away from them. But for pretty much their entire existence, Panda Express has not been operating in the most competitive environment. Sure, maybe in some ways, but I'll challenge you to name another chain of restaurants that is comparable to Panda Express. Going back to the list, how have I talked about Panda Express for so long without even mentioning their menu? If you haven't tried their honey walnut shrimp, what have you been doing? Now, it does cost a little bit extra 
but it is well worth it. There's a whole debate out there as to whether or not they serve authentic Asian cuisine. I don't want to be part of that debate or get into the specifics, but obviously it's not the same thing that you would get in China. They have made changes to make the food more appealing to the American customer base, and they have made changes to allow them to make it quicker, changes that have obviously been affected. Their famous orange chicken, for example, was actually invented by a chef working for them in 1987. It has since become their most popular menu item, and the reason that many people go there. They sell tens of millions of pounds of it each year, so that alone probably accounts for a good portion of their success. Really, I could stay here talking about their menu for a while. But for the purposes of this video, I just want to convey how effective they've been in introducing Asian food to the American markets. So much so that, for many Americans, this has been their first and biggest exposure to it. Next on my list, I want to briefly talk about how technology has been helpful for Panda Express. For this, I'm looking at Peggy Chern. Given her various degrees in science and experience in the field, she knows about technology, and maybe the biggest way that this has helped them is the fact that, from the beginning in 1983, they were using computers and a point-of-sale system, giving them an advantage over the rest of the industry because most of the others weren't doing it yet. It made them more efficient and that it allowed people to place their orders faster. It gave them better control of their inventory. They learned which items were selling better than others, helping them reduce their cost and making the customers happy happier in the process. My next reason behind their success is a debatable one, but Panda Express is, amazingly, a private company that doesn't franchise. I should say that there are a few minor exceptions on the franchising part, but nothing significant. This right here has to be one of the biggest ways that they stand out from the rest of the industry because these are such effective ways to grow that they've been used by almost every other fast food chain. Panda Express, like I said, amazingly has been able to do it by reinvesting their own profits. They say that they prefer this approach because it's their only way to maintain complete control. You know, if you have a franchisee running a location, he may let the quality of the food slip or the service or whatever. Or if they became a public company, they would then have to answer to investors who may want to make changes that they disagree with. Plus, the stock market is also known to value short-term profits over the long-term business plan. I say it's debatable because if they did do these things, they would probably be bigger but due to the lack of control, the restaurants would almost certainly not align as closely with the family's vision and may be less popular with their customers as a result. So it's a definite trade-off, but the way that they've chosen to do it has obviously been paying off. My next reason kind of ties into that. It's their focus on their employees. It's the mentality that happy employees lead to happy customers. And for the most part, that does seem to be the case here. There have been some issues at times, but Peggy and Andrew are always talking about the Panda way and pretty much identify this as the biggest reason behind their growth and success. If you work for Panda Express, you likely make more money than the industry average and get better benefits if you work so many hours a week. And you'll be encouraged to meditate and read self-help books. They may even want you to take management courses because a lot of the people in their corporate offices are promoted from the restaurants. They have a low turnover rate. They've been put on various lists talking about the best employers. My eighth and final reason behind their success is their charitable efforts. In 1999, they established Panda Cares. They are primarily focused on raising money for children's hospitals, education, and disaster relief. Since the start of it, they have raised over $247 million that mostly come from customers within the restaurants. But they also have this annual golf tournament, and employees help out, and these other means as well. You may want to look further into it if you're interested, but the fact is that they're very upfront about it to a point where most Panda Express customers are probably well aware of it. Maybe you've seen that donation box, or you've been asked to round up your purchase to the nearest dollar or whatever else, and that contributes to their overall image and general success of the company. Let me know in the comments, what do you get when you go to Panda Express? As I said, I am all about that honey walnut shrimp and the orange chicken, of course, it's a winning combination, but also, what do you think of my 8 reasons behind their success? Is there something that doesn't belong there, or should something else be added to it? Maybe you think that adorable little pen on the logo has played a part in it, or maybe the fortune cookies, those are always fun. So any farts you have about Panda Express, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.